If you can believe it, Grand Theft Auto 3 originally was going to have a mission pack release, and that was going to be Vice City. In an interview, Leslie Benzies said that they didn't even really have the intention of the sequel. He said, after we released Grand Theft Auto 3, we spent right. three months working on the PC version and then started thinking about the mission pack, such as new weapons, vehicles, missions, basically anything we wanted. Okay, relax, relax. We realized right. there was too much stuff. So it's gonna be the nerve is broken, exploding the low entropy and the encryption key negotiation of Bluetooth. Where are you the are? Daniel Antolini, Antonioli, uh S U T D uh Nils Ole Tippenhauer, C I S P A, Casper B. Rasmussen, uh University of South of South Oxford. If they had said, okay, we're going to use Enix, that slash conference, slash you see Enix, security, and then team slash presentations, and then you know, these papers, including the proceedings of 28, the use Enix, security, and symposium, by August 15 till 16, 2019, in the car, California, USA. Well, open access, may want open access to the proceedings of the 28 UCNX security symposium is sponsored by UCNX. The nerve is broken, exploding low entropy in the encryption key negotiation of VRODR. Daniela Antin Antonioli, Singapore University of Technology and Design, Daniela Antonioli, at my mail, that is UTD, that EDU, that is the asterisk. I guess. Niels and the Tippenhauer CISP. Town Hall Centers for Information Security, Deepen Hour at CISP, that's our land. Casper Rasmussen, Department of Computer Science, the University of Oxford. Casper that Rasmussen, uh, CS that OX, that AC that UK. Abstract, we present an, uh, I'm gonna make this correct. Get some of my coffee. Abstract, we present an attack on encryption key negotiation protocol of Bluetooth VR slash EDR. The attack allows the third party with the knowledge of any secret materials such as link and encryption keys to make two or more victims agree on an encryption key with only one byte eight bits of entropy. Such low entropy enables the attacker to easily brute force and negotiate the encryption keys to create an eavesdrop to cipher text and inject valid encrypted message in real time. The attack is totally is still free because the encryption key negotiation is transparent to the Bluetooth users. The, the attack is standard compliant because Bluetooth VR EDR versions required to support encryption keys with entropy between 1 and 16 bytes and do not secure the key negotiation protocol. As a result, the attacker completely breaks Bluetooth VR the slash EDR security without being detected. We call our attack key negotiation a Bluetooth attack. No. The attack targets the firmware of Bluetooth chip because the firmware Bluetooth controller implements all the security features of Bluetooth VR slash EDR as a standard compliant attack. It is expected to be effective on any firmware that follows the specification and on any device using a vulnerable, a vulnerable firmware. We describe how to, to perform the NOV attack when we implement it. We evaluate our implementation on more than 14 Bluetooth chips from popular manufacturers such as Intel, Broadcom, Apple and Qualcomm. Our results demonstrate that all tested devices are vulnerable to the NOV attack. 
We discuss countermeasures to fix the Bluetooth specifications and its implementation. Introduction Bluetooth BR EDR referred for the rest of this paper as Bluetooth. It's a short range wireless with technology widely used by many products such as mobile devices, laptops, IoT, and industry devices. Bluetooth provides security mechanisms to achieve authentication, confidentiality, and data integrity at the link layer. The security and privacy of Bluetooth has been attacked and fixed several times, going all the way back to Bluetooth version 1.0.15-32. Uh, several successful attacks uh, on the secure simple operating interface um, 28,13,4 have resulted in substantial revision of the standard. Attacks on Android, iOS, Windows, and Linux implementations of Bluetooth were also discussed in. Uh, However, uh, little attention has been given to the security of the encryption key in the machine protocol. Example, uh, the Bluetooth security overview in the latest Bluetooth and Core specification version 5 does not mention it. 6 page 2040. <coughs> I don't know what we're the referencing, but we're going to see later. The encryption key negotiation protocol is used by two Bluetooth devices to agree on the entropy of the link layer encryption key. Entropy key negotiation was introduced in the specification by Bluetooth to third with the international and specific encryption regulations to, and to facilitate security up upgrades. To, best, to the best of our knowledge, all, vers all, the, all versions of Bluetooth standard, including the latest version 5.0, to require to use entropy values between 1 and 16 bytes. The specification of Bluetooth says this requirement of goals. For the encryption algorithm, the key size may vary between 1 and 16 octets, 8 to 128 bits. Our interpretation of this requirement is that any device to be standard compliant has to support encryption keys with the entropy varying from 1 to 16 bytes. The attack that we present in this work confirms our interpretation. The encryption key negotiation protocol is conducted between two parties as follows. The initiator pro proposes an entropy value n that is an integer between 1 and 16. The other party either accepts it or proposes a lower value or abhors the protocol. If the other value proposes a lower value, example n minus 1, comma, then the initiator either accepts it or proposes a lower value or it aborts the protocol. At the end of a successful negotiation, the parties have agreed on the entropy value of the Bluetooth encryption key. The entropy negotiation is performed over the link message protocol, LMP. It is not encrypted and not authenticated, and it's transparent to the Bluetooth users because LMP packets are managed by the firmware of the Bluetooth chips and they are not propagated to higher layers. In this paper, we describe, implement, implement and evaluate an attack capable of making two or more victims using a Bluetooth encryption key with one byte entropy without noticing it. The attacker can and then can easily brute force the encryption key. If drop and decrypt the ciphertext and index binary ciphertext without affecting the status of the target Bluetooth peak on it. In other words, the attacker completely breaks Bluetooth BR slash EDR security without being detected. We call this attack the new session of Bluetooth and attack. The novel attack can be conducted remotely or by maliciously modifying a few bytes in one of the victim's Bluetooth firmware. Being a standard compliant attack, it is expected to be affected on any firmware implementing the Bluetooth specifications. Regardless of the, the Bluetooth versions, the attacker is not required to possess any pre-shared secret material and he does not have to observe the pairing process of the victims. The attack is effective even with, when the victims use a stronger security mode of Bluetooth secure connections. The attack is still uh, stealthy because the application using Bluetooth and even the operating systems of the victims cannot access or control the encryption key negotiating protocol. See section 3.2 for the details. After explaining the attack in detail, we implemented leveraging or development of several Bluetooth security procedures to generate valid link and encryption keys and the internal blue kit uh, and, and the internal blue kit. 
Our implementation allows the man in the middle attacker to intercept, manipulate, and drop LMP packets in real time and to brute force low entropy encryption keys without knowing any pre shared secret. We have this closer finding about the Nova attack with CRT cert and the Bluetooth CID. And following that, we plan to release our, pro, our, our tools as open source at github.com, Franco Zappa, and Nova. This will enable other Bluetooth researchers to take advantage of our work. We we'll summarize our main contribution as follows. Alright, let's copy this real quick and see if it's there. But let's see, read the summarization first. We develop an attack on the encryption key negotiation protocol Bluetooth BR EDR that allows to let two unaware victims negotiate a link layer encryption key with one byte of entropy. The attack then is able to brute force the low entropy key, decrypt all traffic, and inject arbitrary cipher text. The attacker does not have to know any secret material and he can target multiple nodes and pick on it at the same time. We demonstrate the practical feasibility of the attack by implementing it. Our implementation involves a man in the middle attacker capable of manipulating the encryption key negotiating protocol, brute forcing the key and decrypting the traffic while extended by two or more on our victims. All ten standard compliant devices should be vulnerable to our attack, including the ones using the, strong, the strongest Bluetooth security mode. In, the, in order to demonstrate that uh, those problem has not somehow been fixed in practice, we test more than 14 different Bluetooth chips and find all of them to be vulnerable. We discussed that what changes should be made both to the Bluetooth standard and its implementation in order to counter this attack. Our work is being organized as follows. In section 2, we introduce the Bluetooth BR EDR stack. In section 3, we present the key negotiation of Bluetooth and of attack and an implementation of the attack is discussed in section 4. We evaluate the impact of our attack in section 5 and we discuss the attack and our proposed countermeasurements in section 6. We present the related work in section 7 and we conclude the paper in section 8. 2. Background. People 1. Basic Bluetooth rate and extended data rate. <coughs> Bluetooth basic rate extended data rate BR slash EDR also known as Bluetooth Classic is a widely used wireless technology for low power short range communication maintained by the Bluetooth Special Interest Group CIG. Its physical layer uses the same 2.4 GHz frequency spectrum of Wi-Fi and adaptive frequency helping to mitigate radio frequency interference. Uh, Bluetooth network is called a Piconet and it uses a master-slave medium access protocol. There is always one master device per piconet at a time. The devices are synchronized by maintaining a reference clock signal defined as click or CLK. <laughs> Each of our device has a Bluetooth address, BTADD, consisting of a sequence of six bytes. From left to right, the first two bytes are defined and as non-significant address part NAP. And the third byte as upper address part EAP and the last part, last three bytes as lower address part. Alright, from left to right, maybe it's time to for no taking. Alright, where are we? Okay, this is some of the days real quick. I'm gonna do this. Alright, come on. Address. 
consisting of sequence of six bytes, wait, bytes, whoops, and sequence of six bytes, okay, first two, none, significant, wait, oh, come on, okay, uh, not significant, address, or, just about ripping and then that bad horse thing. It actually was uh, about then content delivery pipeline. Is, I'm sorry, they wanted to make third, horse armor 250. The guy who actually made the horse armor said we didn't know what to do. But I'm going to go ahead and say somebody then, along the line said, "Oh, that's great. We'll make a ton of money for a few days of artistic work maybe." Who knows? Maybe the art was even already done and they just decided not to put the armor in the game so they could test the right. pipeline. Establish secure so, net connections to devices first have to pair. This procedure results in the establishment of a long-term secret, uh, long-term shared secret defined as linky, indicated with KI. The original Prey 2, yeah, it was announced by 3D Realms in 2006, and although I am definitely uh, not a Prey game, Arcane is phenomenal and the new Prey game. And I think that the Prey reboot is actually a pretty good game. But the game that was teased as Prey 2, although it looked almost nothing like Prey, the original Prey takes place on a techno-organic spaceship. This Prey 2 takes place in a big alien city and is more like a big open world game, like infamous perhaps. Though know the action is nothing like it, it actually gives me pretty big Mass Effect vibes. Although it's a much more grungy and dirty dystopian cyberpunk type city and it's also got parkour in it and it's not even that i don't know to freeze it uh shift and press f3 you can get into the shift why you would call it prey 2 apparently it is vaguely narratively uh, related to the original and what we eventually got is literally nothing like that at all but hey right. we did get a cool game out of it i'm not gonna say that we didn't i would have really liked to have seen this other bizarre prey editors there's a symbols i don't know how you say this i also think it would have oh come on okay okay let's just leave it like that nothing like the original prey in a lot of respects i get why they canceled it moving on to number eight the um, then, of doom. Uh, you know everybody right loves here. doom 2016 it's a pretty damn uh, never going to beat the classic doom the so ko there are four types of chaos killing game. Initialization, unit combination, and mastery. Wait. That's three. Oh. Unit and slash. That thing combination. Okay. I get on the consoles to buy the game, and I, like a lot of other people, found that I had to log into Bethesda. Combination and master. Now, I have an account for then, but I do not know the password to that account, so I had to spend the time doing the password reset, which is really, really annoying. Generated. From 1993, is a year older than Sonic. Generated Hedgehog. from uh, Imagine Sega from a device. And you have to learn from a device to play this genesis device to pair with every other device. Who didn't have an account and had to register an account, giving their information to Bethesda, and also having to waste time to register for an account for an offline game in the wake of all of the annoyance and the forefront combination keys you generate using an elliptic of the differential element ECDH on the P256 elliptic curve. This procedure is defined as a pure simple pairing as SSP and it provides an option authentication of the link key. Combination keys are the most secure and widely used. Okay. Wait, what happened to the unit? Uh, oh yeah. Unit keys is generated from a device and used to pair with every other key. Oh my god, okay. I'm moving the lines to so they came up with new to every other which at first device. Looks All right, so it's got a cool looking bottle that seems pretty much like what you would think 
Looks like to a rocket. End. Although it looks like a classy rocket. Okay. You know, like a high-end liquor bottle. Something that's trying to be respectable. It went for $80. Eight zero, as in twenty dollars yeah. more than the actual game itself for a single bottle okay. of rum. I mean, keep in mind that rum can have a pretty wildly varying price. There's a uh, realm of okay, possibility okay. where it would cost uh, that much and not be a ripoff. However, it was a ripoff. Leave. The rum itself apparently okay. wasn't very good. I don't know. I didn't get a bottle of this. Let's get this stuff. Yet. But I do know that Close that bottle down. looks like it's probably metal. And guess what? It's not. It's plastic. It's something that, as a collector's item, Always sucks. Generated. And like I said, while it's not outside the realm of possibility for rum to cost $8, oh, uh, I'm this? guessing more people would have probably bought it in a case or something as part of like a Fallout merch collection. Okay, it was an area thing, which we will be talking about later in the video, because wowie, Bethesda merch. Moving on to number six, Denuvo. Oh, Denuvo, the DRM disease that okay, domination gameplay. No one was happy you were included with Dishonored 2. Uh, I'm just taking notes because this is the best way to actually like then make reference later and use it for studies or like something in real life playable. So we're we, uh, okay, combination, uh, two. So that somebody has to figure out how to get around this info, because nobody wants it there. And somebody always does. Coming in at number five, do you remember that time when the Fallout 7 uh, 6 player that had 900 hours in the game got banned from the game? Yeah, who was very likely one of the only, if not the only people who had played okay, so then the other ones. They were like, you got too much ammo, dude. You're out. And let's just be clear, I don't know how true or not that is, but if you got somebody who's got like a large amount Only of four. that nobody's really playing that much, probably don't care. Right, yes. It's like a bad idea. Like if this dude had a quarter of that playtime, that's way more time than most people invest in Fallout 76. Moving on to number four. Hey, remember how bad Skyrim on PS2 was? Oh yeah, I to use it. because of the way the memory system is set up on the PS2, the larger your save file got, the more likely you were to encounter a game including bug. And uh, when they released the patch that was supposed to fix the thing, it didn't fix the thing. And it was after a bunch of, like, Todd Howard games. Mm. Got it, guys. No worries from here on out. And the patch didn't fix it. And people were sending in save files. And they were it's looking at the same there's other stuff. We're gonna have to keep addressing this little by little. I mean, I just bought it on Xbox 360. I didn't bother keeping the PS3 version. It was it was that bad. Coming in at number three, I told you we'd talk about it. It's the canvas bags. Fallout 76. When people bought the power on for Fallout 76 for two hundred dollars, they got a number of collector's items along with it. And a quarter canvas bag that the helmet would fit in. Except for when these games actually showed up physically at their houses. Oh, the bag was cheap. It was a nylon bag. Now, this is egregious for one very big reason. Nylon bags suck for the canvas bag. They are not durable. They them very easily. And the whole reason to have a canvas bag is A, sort of an authenticity, and B, it is actually durable and worth having, I guess. And it's also the thing that they advertised that they were selling. Uh, the specification for the defense was custom security procedures to achieve confidentiality, integrity, and authentication. In the specification of the names and are prefixed with letter E. In particular, a combination link E KL is mutually authenticated by E1 procedures. This procedure uses a public nonce 
AU and Scorant, and the slave as splitted address PT ADDs to generate two values. The sign response is REST sign response and the authenticated ciphering offset ACLO. Uh, SRS sign response is used over the air to verify that two devices actually own the same K link. Key link and uh, what is it? The symmetric encryption key is generally using the E3 procedure. When the key link is a combination key, E3 uses ACO computed by E1 as its cipher offset. E1 is uh, what is this? Uh, specific way in the specification, their names are perfect. Wait, the specification but, uh, defines the custom procedures to seek integrity and authentications. A community, okay. E1 procedure, key link, mutually authenticated by the E1 procedure. Okay, that's the E random BT adds to have the SRS and ACOs. Okay, that's for the KL. And symmetric version C. Generated by the E3, which is a combination that ACO compared by the E1. And it's suffering of the number. Cuff. Uh, parameters together with the key link and the and a public nonce e n underscore random uh, rent, uh, that e1 and e3 will use a custom hash function defined in the specification of bluetooth with age the hash function is based on safer cipher plus comma a block cipher that was submitted as an aes candidate in 1998 1998, okay. Uh, once encryption key KC is generated, there are two possible ways to encrypt the link layer traffic. If both devices support secure connections, then encryption is performed using a modified version of AES-CCM, then, or AES. AES-CCM is an authenticated, uh, authenticate then encrypt cipher that combines counter mode with CBC mac and it's defined in IETF RFC 361014. As a side note, the specification of Bluetooth defined a message authentication code MAC with a term uh, with the term message integrity check MIC. Uh, if a secure connection is not supported, then the device uses the E0 stream cipher for encryption. The, the cipher is derived from a um, massive Ruple algorithm, and it is described in the specification of Bluetooth 6 page uh, 1662. Uh, it uh, requires synchronization between the master and the slaves of the Piconet. This is achieved using the Bluetooth clock value, clock, CLK. Another implementation of Bluetooth provides the host control interface, HCI. The, this interface allows to separate, to separate the Bluetooth stack into two components, the host and the controller. Each component has specific responsibilities, that is, the controller manages low-level radio and baseband operations, and the host manages high-level application layer. Profiles. Typically, the host is implemented in the operating system and the controller in the firmware of Bluetooth chip. For example, Bluezy and Bluejoy implement HCI hosts on Linux and Android, and the firmware of Qualcomm or Broadcom Bluetooth chip implements uh, the HCI controller. The host and the internet and the controller communicate using the host controller interface uh, protocol. This protocol is based on commands and events, that is, the host sends acknowledged commands to the controller and the controller uses events to notify the host. The link manager protocol, LMP, is uh, used over the air by two controllers to perform link setup and controller for uh, Bluetooth uh, BR-EDR. Uh, LMP is neither encrypted nor authenticated. The LMP packets do not propagate to higher protocol layers, since the host OSs are not aware about the LMP packet exchange between the Bluetooth controllers. Alice and both victims are paired and initiate a Bluetooth connection. Charlie makes the victim negotiate an encryption key with one uh, byte of anchor entropy. Charlie prefers the encryption key in real time. Charlie decrypts on victim messages injected and injects valid messages. However, stages of an attack. Uh, exploding low entropy in the encryption key negotiation of Bluetooth BR-EDR. 
In this section, we describe the key negotiation of Bluetooth and of attack. The attack allows Charlie the attacker to reduce the entropy of the encryption key. Of any Bluetooth BR-EDR refers Bluetooth connection to one byte without being detected by the victim's Alice and Bob. The attacker can brute force and encrypt the, the encryption key without having to know any pre-shared secret material with have, without having to observe the secure symbol bearing protocol. As a result, the attacker can eavesdrop the decrypt all the uh, traffic and inject arbitrary packets in the target Bluetooth network PicoNet. The attack works regardless of the usage of secure networks, a strong security network. But now, attack sky stages are not shown in figure one, and they describe in detail in the rest of this section. 2.1 system and attacker model. We assume a system composed of two or more legitimate devices that communicate using Bluetooth as described in section 2. One device is a master and the other one is a slave. Without loss of generality, we will focus on a, on a pig head with one master and one slave. Allison, but we indicate their Bluetooth address with BTADDM and BTADDS. The, what is this? And the Bluetooth club with clock. The clock is used for, for synchronization, and it does not provide any security guarantee. The victims are capable of using secure simple pairing and secure connections. And the combination enables a high security level of Bluetooth and should be protected against eavesdropping and active man in the manual attacks. For example, if both devices have a, a display, their users have to confirm if they see the same numeric sequence to mutually authenticate them. Like Charlie wants to decrypt all messages exchanged between Alice and Rob, and Jack violated the encrypted message without being detected. The attacker has no access. Okay, let's see. If you pre generation and usage of the Bluetooth link layer encryption PK1C, first the KC is generated from KL and other other parameter KC has 16 bytes of entropy, and it is not directly used as the encryption key. He, um, what is this, one or a car? Is that like a commission site? See, the actual encryption key is key factor. No, no, no. Uh, encryption key is computed by reducing the entropy of KC to M bytes. And it's an integer between 1 and 16, and the result of the encryption key negotiation protocol, the M byte entropy K factorial C is then used for the link layer encryption by either the E0 of the AES CCM cipher. The only pre-shared secret material that is the link layer key KL and the encryption key KC, Charlie can observe the public noise EN underscore RAND and AU underscore RAND, the Bluetooth plug and the packets exchange between Alice and Bob. We find two attacker models, the remote attacker and the firmware attacker. A remote attacker controls a device that is that is in the Bluetooth, in Bluetooth range with Alice and Bob. He is able to pass and capture can uh, encrypt messages actively manipulating on encrypted communication and to drop packets using techniques such as man in the middle and manipulation of physical layer signals. The firmware attacker is able to compromise the firmware or Bluetooth chip of a single victim using very techniques such as backdoor to apply chasing plants and wrong firmware manufacturers. The firm attacker requires no access to the Bluetooth host or S an application used by the his by the victims. Coming in at number six is the Freaker virus from Day is Gone. Now, given we've already talked to about the security of data and things similar from this, I'm going to go ahead and say that for the most part, it's a pretty standard. <coughs> Lab was developing a virus, virus got out, everybody turned into a zombie, and America ended. Story. However, I want to say what makes the Freaker virus so interesting and unique actually doesn't even occur unless you get the secret ending, in which you find out that the Freaker virus is actually evolving, and that rather than just being a zombie, a mindless, rabid fool out for blood, some infected are actually gaining human intelligence. Now, it's one of those viruses that gives the infected enhanced speed, agility, and strength, so if those smart people are also bloodthirsty, that's actually a pretty good setup for a sequel. Coming in at number five, the Scourge of the Beast in Bloodborne. So the Scourge of the Beast is a plague in which citizens of Yarnum become monsters, which is tremendously inconvenient because Yarnum has a supposedly wonderful healing process called Blood Ministration, performed by the Healing Church. 
supposedly it can cure you